Hi, I'm Phil Van Bolle. And this is my 41st uh, video discussing 1950s British science fiction publishing. Now, in an earlier video, number 37, I deplored the abject failure of the Dan Day Space Book, which had been published by Hulton Press in 1952. And one of my respondents, Morgan Wallace, suggested that I might uh, do a, a video featuring some of the more successful 1950s space annuals. And this is it. Now, perhaps the most interesting and successful space annual of the 1950s was Hamilton and Co's Authentic Book of Space, edited by H.J. Campbell. This had a foreword by Arthur C. Clarke and was published for the Christmas trade in September 1954. It was published by uh, Hamilton Company, which we see here. It had 102 pages and it was a large size. It was uh, eight and a quarter by 10 and 3 quarter inches was bound in pictorial boards with a striking full colour picture by John Richards. It was identical on the back cover. Front and back covers were identical. And the cover showed a, a lunar base and a spaceship cover. It was clearly inspired by Thames Publishing's 1948 classic Flights into the Future which I discussed in my previous video. And this book was also a mixture of fiction and speculative articles about space travel and astronomy. Whilst the fiction by, we we'll see here, William F. Temple, William F. Temple, Mary Dog, who was an occasional contributor, to authentic and uh, Leslie Crouch. Oh, I've lost, lost Leslie Crouch's uh, story. We'll come. We'll come back to that. Anyway, the fiction was uh, was juvenile, but it was very well written. And in addition to the fiction, there was articles by Arthur C. Clarke, Frank Wilson, Ken Bulmer, E.C. Tubb. Oh, here we are. That's the uh, story by Leslie Crouch, which I mentioned before. Uh, I'm talking about the non-fiction articles. We included one by E.C. Tubb, which you see here which is a realistic, uh, a scientifically accurate discussion of the planet Mars and the problems of colonization. And uh, other articles by Rolf Smith, a member of the BIS, William F. Temple, and others included Bert Campbell and their old friend Harry Harper. Remember Harry Harper was the main contributor to the Flights in the Space book which we discussed in the last video, Harry Harper. And all the articles were very scientifically accurate and quite adult. There was also a current science fiction film inside a feature on Riders to the Stars by the always entertaining Forrest Ackerman, who lived in uh, Hollywood. So he got all the latest gossip on the science fiction films, which were enjoying a boom um, in the 1950s. There's a still from the film, uh, Richard Carlson, Write Us to the Stars. And uh, they also had a 16 page comic strip in two colors, black and red, which we can see here. This was uh, 
The fair adaptation of the John J. Deegan novel Old Growler, Spaceship 2213, which had appeared in an early edition of Authentic. It was drawn by a regular artist for uh, Authentic, Mortimer, but John Mortimer, who was uncredited. Now we can see here that unfortunately Mortimer was no Frank Hampson. In his modernistic impressionist style looked crude in comparison to Frank Hampson. And it didn't really it didn't quite come off the illustrations. However, there was some excellent black and white artwork by uh, John Richards, the cover artist. You see there. And uh, his artwork included some pen portraits of the main contributors. There we see Richards portrait them. Ted Tobe, Bill Temple, Ken Bulmer, there's Forrest Ackerman, who lived in Hollywood. And that's the bearded H.J. Campbell. Now of a special interest was a long article from the Earth to the Stars. This was expanded from a feature that had been serialised in Authentic Science Fiction magazine and reproduced eight of the magazine covers without lettering as beautiful full page plates on art paper. Four of them in full colour. Let's have a look at that. There it is. From Earth to the Stars. It was an expanded uh, article uh, on a feature that had been previously serialised on the magazine. The magazine covers and it was a, it were described briefly on the back cover. And this article was an expanded version of that. And there you see the beautiful full colour plate that had originally appeared in the magazine, on the magazine cover. And I just, it was scattered throughout the book. It was continued. There's the next sequence. You see there, the, Beautiful full kit, full, uh, full colour reproduction of the cover. Now four of the plates were in full colour and there was another three in black and white. Uh, can we see that cover there? Here it is in black and white. Continuation. There's a beautiful uh, shot of a spaceship approaching Mars, which was that cover. And there's the black and white version, which we see there. And as the article concluded, uh, and these further covers of a starship being built in space, which we see there. And finally, there's the uh, interstellar ship with its iron drive, which you can see on that cover there. Now, unfortunately, the expensive art paper impacted on the publisher's budget. It caused the board covers to have a cheap, non-cloth thin binding. That's the spine, but it's, it's just, uh, it's not cloth. Unfortunately, this uh, means that most of the surviving copies today have lost their spines. That's what you see on the spare copy I have. It's completely lost its spine. There. It's unfortunate. Nearly all the copies that turn up are missing their spines. 
but it's extremely rare and good condition. And nonetheless, it's an essential item for the British science fiction collector. Good luck finding any copy now though, you'll need it. I've just checked ear books and there are no copies on offer there anywhere in the world. Now, From Earth to the Stars, almost certainly written by editor H.J. Campbell, was one of the most interesting features of the magazine, Authentic Science Fiction. Of all the science fiction magazines being published in the early and late 50s, the big four, New World, Science, Fantasy, Nebula and Authentic, dominated the field thoroughly and each contained their own interesting evolution in terms of design, cover art and writers. However, the evolution of Authentic itself is itself interesting, especially in its early years when it was being edited by the black-bearded H.J. Bert Campbell, and up to the years when E.C. Ted Tubb edited the magazine in the later 1950s. Authentic was especially notable because it was then the only monthly science fiction magazine published in a small paperback format. Indeed, the first 28 issues contained a complete novel and are today collected as pocketbook novels. I discussed these issues in my earlier video, number 8. But in this new video, I want to concentrate on its later period, 1953-54, in which Authentic's cover art changed drastically in terms of quality and content. I'm grateful to Morgan's elder brother, Sean Wallace, who first gave me the idea of writing the article on which this video is based. Now, Authentic's first editor, Gordon Lansbury, had resigned from his post for various reasons, but before leaving, he chose as his successor, H.J. Campbell, a scientist first and a fiction writer secondly. In November of 52, Campbell officially took over editorship of Authentic, who had been the technical editor since issue three. And in an attempt to improve Authentic and attract new readers, he slowly transformed his magazine bit by bit, switching to novelettes and short stories, increasing the page count, and by adding interior illustrations along with other physical improvements. Here we see the interior, interior art, also by John Richards. Now the 35th issue, which was, which was July 1953, heralded a new era for Authentic. Looking back at the earlier covers, their quality was variable. Some were good, some were bad, but all were oddly appealing. However, in July, the series From the Earth to the Stars began with a bang. From Earth to the Stars. Intended to portray the future history of spaceflight realistically, these wonderful documentary pictures were painted by John Richards, the art editor, under his alias Davis. Each painting was complemented by a short essay, probably by Campbell, which you can see was on the back covers. The new artwork was an instant hit with readers who voiced their approval in the letter columns. Now initially the first four covers, 35 through to 38, were restricted in the sense that they had a yellow border. They all had that yellow border, which uh, reduced the size of the unlettered uh, cover painting. However, by issue number 39, the borders were completely removed, expanding the pin to full, full cover size, albeit it was now partly obscured by lettering. The impressively imagined reality of space light as pictured by Richards was portrayed in vivid colours and sharp lines each cover delineating forcibly the mechanical creations of man and the breathtaking beauty of outer space and various alien landscapes. These covers were clearly inspired by Chesley Bonestell, 
In British Interplanetary Society artist members, R.A. Smith and H.G. Ross. Of all the paintings for this series, that for issue number 41 perhaps, showing a spaceship landing on the Martian moon Phobos, was perhaps the most striking. So popular was the cover feature that it inspired publication of the authentic Book of Space in the fall of 1954. As uh, previously stated, the text was greatly expanded into a comprehensive essay, and whilst there was not bylined, it was almost certainly written by Campbell. Seven of the covers were reproduced in large size, four of them in full colour, as we saw, and without any disfiguring text. Now, even Campbell himself felt that authentic was changing for the better. In his editorial for number 39, he'd written, 1953, it seems, is fated to be a year of change and progress for authentic. We began with January's new look and new cover design, additional short stories, new departments. In our July issue, we began our series of space covers resulting in a 100% welcome from our readers, and at the same time, a new easy-to-open binding was introduced. And now this month, do you recognise Authentic? We think it's a substantial improvement and more truly reflects the individuality that is authentic. What do you think? Indeed, Campbell had worked a miracle in a matter of months. He'd stolen a march on all of his competitors. Nebula, though begun early in 1952, hadn't yet achieved a regular publication. And its covers were a mishmash of several different styles, painted variously by Alan Hunter, Alan Hunter Bob Clothier, Ken McIntyre, and uh, many other artists. New Worlds and Science Fantasy were plagued by production problems and delays with their printer, and therefore between the two only four issues came out that year. This was shortly in contrast to Authentic, which never missed a monthly issue. Authentic soon attained a peak circulation of 40,000 copies each issue, far more than its rivals, and might have gone on to even greater heights. However, the publishers, Hamilton and Company, Stafford Limited, made a cardinal error. As Lansbury recalled, instead of increasing the budget steadily as sales grew, it was cut. Bert Campbell told me this. It was one reason why he left. Because of its low payment rate, it's therefore been wrongly assumed that the magazine could not attract its author's best material. And Authentic has been unfairly even shamefully overlooked by most science fiction anthologists and historians as a result. But as an anthologist myself, I've practically had a clear field in rescuing many wonderful authentic stories from oblivion by such authors as E.C. Tubb, Philip E. High, John Burke, Sydney J. Barnes. Uh, these books are just a small sample of many more similar compilations, each one of them featuring one or more stories that originally appeared in Authentic. Now let's take a closer look at the original magazine covers for Campbell's series. Of these 14 issues, eight covers were, were reprinted without the lettering in, in the book, four of them in full colour, as we've seen. The editor proclaimed, Authentics covers take you step by step from the first manned rocket to man's final conquest of interstellar space. Accurate, scientific, exciting. This is the way it will happen. Number 35 in July 
showed the construction of the first three-step orbital rocket for space travel. Now this cover was also reprinted in black and white for the 1954 non-fiction booklet Authentic Science Fiction Handbook. There it is, which was briefly on sale at 1 and 6. But it was given free as a premium to subscribers to the magazine, of which my young teenage self was one. There's the, the uh, where we can see the advert. Excuse me, bear with me for a minute. Oh, that was this, was this, this was the one. Yes, there we are. There's the house advert, which I responded to and became a subscriber. And this uh, booklet was given away free as a premium if you took out a subscription, which I did. Now this booklet is interesting. It's now a fantastic rarity. When I checked uh, last week, there was only one copy currently on offer anywhere from a specialist American dealer on aid books at the astonishing price of £445 plus overseas postage for a little booklet. And when I checked earlier today, that book had been sold. So currently there's no copies available online. Boy, I'm glad I kept my copy, although I inscribed it in somewhat embarrassing fashion. As you can see here, there's all young boys I want to do. £445 of trashy window rubbish. <laughs> glad I kept that. Now, Let's have a look at the next cover. Number 37 in September shows the cutoff of the first of the three stage rockets high above the Earth. Number 38 in October shows the early stages of the construction of Earth's first artificial satellite. There it is. The space station is formulated by R.A. Smith and H.G. Ross of the British Interplanetary Society. Number 39 in November showed the completed Earth Satellite Space Station. Again, a design based on the BIS original by Smith and Ross. Number 40 in December 1953 showed man's first approach to another planet, Mars, via a space to space rocket powered vessel. Number 41 in December showed a preliminary landing on one of the moons of Mars, Phobos. Number 42, in February 1954, showed the founding of the first Martian colony, set, setting up plastic domes. Number 43 was set on the last outpost in the solar system, setting up man's base on Triton, moon of Neptune. Number 44, Shows the skeleton in April, shows the skeleton of a gigantic starship under construction in space. Number 45 shows man's first starship being completed in space above Triton, the moon of Neptune. And number 46 in June showed emergency repair crews working on the starship's iron drive engines 200 years into the vessel's interstellar voyage. Number 47 in July, showed the starship passing through interstellar space through a system of triple suns searching for a habitable planet. And the final cover, number 48, in August 1954, the starship had reached its destination, the planet of another star, and small manned vessels can be seen landing on the alien world, man's new home. 
This series had undoubtedly clinched Authentic's place on the totem pole, the magazine literally going from the earth to the stars.